let's get started with the questions. Um, so the first question is from, I'm just going to read these people's YouTube names and their Facebook names. Uh, to the Hut, must be a Star Wars fan. Um, I have a question about pruning stone fruit trees. I don't know a thing about stone fruit trees. Um, I have read to prune to an open center, which would leave me with a very sad tree. Are there any disadvantages to keeping the center leader and clearing the chimney, etc.? Is the open center specific to stone fruit? Does it have any advantages? This question. I'm just looking because this is this is the French version of this book. Okay. <laughs> and this the English one is novel concepts in tree fruit or, or in fruit tree pruning, something like that. This one is, I would really say it's the best one in the world because it's based on observation and study of the, the way the tree grows naturally. And they do have a chapter on all this. So they'll have a chapter on cherries, on apricot, on peaches, and so on. I, I've tried growing peaches and they keep dying in the winter. So we're not in peach country. Cherries, a little different. Uh, Are those stone fruit? Is that what that means? Yeah, because oh, they have a stone, they have a pit uh, in the middle, as okay. opposed to apple and pear, which are called uh, pip, pip okay. or seeds. Right, so apricot, things like apricot, that. Apricot, peaches, cherries are, are, are stone fruit. Uh -huh. um, in our climate, because the trees don't really go crazy, I would say certainly try central leader, which means one trunk, hmm. because the tree probably won't grow in our climate to be you know, so high. I might be wrong. I mean, I'm, I, I've, I've never even visited the uh, Annapolis Valley peach growing area. That's about the only place that you would probably get peaches in the east. Uh, but certainly from what I've seen with cherries as well, a central leader, everything, it makes it so much easier because a tree naturally has a central leader dominance. And it's a little confused when you start having two, three, four, you know, if you have four stems, or let's say, like you said, open means a vase shape, so you'll have four stems coming out. Well, what happens is when you have the open in the middle, you'll have a lot of what's called reiterations or, or, or branches that want to become the leader, and they'll happen towards the center. So you end up you really end up with a lot of pruning that way, as opposed to if the middle is the boss or the leader, then everybody else radiates out from the leader. And it just, a tree is made to grow, most of our trees are made to grow one stem. And then that dictates everything else. Right. And so I would say get the book, read the, different, the chapters on it, um, what was the name but, of the book in English again? Uh, novel Concepts in Fruit Tree Growing. And the authors, you see that? Uh, Jean-Marie Lespinasse and Evelyn Le Terme. Yeah, I can see that. So I've, I've taught courses with Evelyn for a long time, but I learned from uh, Dr. Lespinasse. He's the one who really... <laughs> I had been teaching pruning for 15 years. And then I followed a one week course with him. And I thought, oh my God, I didn't know anything. Like, <laughs> it's very humbling when you, when you learn from somebody who's really mastered it so well uh, that it's like to us, one of the things I realized, he would walk into an orchard and he'd just look at the trees a few glances and he would say, what happened here three years ago? You had, you know, did, what, was it, what happened? Did you have a frost or did you have too much fruit? And it's like, what? How do you know that? Well, he says, you look at the branch and you see that the, the secondary and the tertiary, there's, there's a disconnect. It's like, what? He, he knew so well what the tree had gone through. Like he could go back and see the history. And so when you see, and, and one of the things I love in his book let me get to, where's Cherry, for example. Cherry is, he has all these drawings. Uh, 
So you'll have these drawings like this. And all those are based on, he actually sat in front of each tree for eight years and drew the reaction of the tree over an eight year period. So it's like, what? And he's a really good uh, artist. So he would have to look exactly how that bud is placed next to that one and understand why did that bud grow like that? Because this last year it had fruit and so on. So he, he understood the reaction and this was on trees that had never been pruned. Right. So he was looking what's the natural reaction or the natural progression of that tree. And like you said, you get prune happy. And I, I know because when spring comes around, it's like, oh, I want to get out there and I want to prune because it's just, you want to go outside. Sometimes I think just take your pruners and go for a walk in the woods and get it out of your system. Because if you go in front of your trees and you want to prune your trees, you'll probably be doing more harm than good often. Uh, and he was always saying it like for a week, you heard him say, put away your secateurs, put away your pruners. Like what? We're here to learn pruning. And he showed us the logic of how the tree does like they they went there the logistics of how he developed these techniques were from they were forced to really reduce the labor cost in orchards in france because the the minimum wage had gone up that it was equivalent of 20 dollars an hour and you think are you going to spend 40 hours on a hectare in an orchard that becomes totally uneconomical if you spend that much time Fast forward about 10 or 15 years later after his work, the average of what they're doing now is about one hectare a day per person. So a hectare is, is anywhere from 900 trees to 2,000 trees. You think, can you imagine? Like how long are you spending per tree? Well, maybe a third of your trees, you're just looking at them and pass. Look pass because once you learn these principles you go this one there's nothing here that i need to correct the only thing you're doing is corrective you're letting the tree do all the work and just if it needs something you intervene and that's where he says you know put away your secateurs we have a oh i want to get in there i want to cut some branches <laughs> i gotta get that book <laughs> It's amazing. It really is. I mean, that's why we put together also, we, we did a, we launched it uh, this, this fall or actually for Christmas, we launched it and it's the pruning course, which is based on what I learned from him. And it, it's really to get you comfortable with pruning because so many people want to prune, but they, like, what are you pruning? Why are you pruning it? Where are you pruning? Uh, do you know if, what we'll do? And it's, it's that ability to project the future and understand the past. And that's the, really the strength. When you look at a tree and you see, oh, you've got a lot of suckers. Well, you, first of all, you know why you had suckers. And then if you do, you know how to tame them. I like to say it's taming the suckers. Perfect. So it, there's, yeah, there's so many things. Let's get to your next question. Okay. <laughs>